Hey, welcome back. In this video, we want to learn how to find a basis for the span of a set of vectors. A set of vectors can really span the entire vector space. For example, if we have a set of three-dimensional vectors, their span could potentially span all of R3. Um, but if their span is anything less than the entire dimensional space, then they're going to be spanning a subspace. And for example, in R3, a subspace could be a plane or a line, basically just spaces that can be described with less dimensions than the entire vector space. So let's first talk about subspaces. A basis for a subspace in Rn is just a set of vectors that spans the subspace and are linearly independent. So basically, a basis is just a minimum set of vectors whose span describes the subspace that we're talking about. And when we're talking about linearly independent, it just means that none of the vectors that form the basis are linear combinations of each other. So if you imagine that we had a one-dimensional subspace, so basically just a line, then we would actually only need one vector to describe that span because any scaled up and scaled down version of that one vector will give us every other point on that line. If we think about a basis for a two-dimensional subspace, well a two-dimensional subspace would be a plane and we only need two vectors to describe any point on the plane because we can have every scaled up and scaled down version of those added to each other to get any other point on that plane as long as those aren't parallel and if they were parallel well, then they would basically be linearly dependent because one of them would be a combination of the other or a scaled up or scaled down version of the other. And this works in any number of dimensions. So if we have a basis for a subspace with n dimensions, then we're going to have n vectors in that basis, no more and no less. So let's just draw a plane here. And if we wanted to describe this plane with a set of vectors, we would only need two linearly independent vectors. Right? We could draw on one like this and another one like that. And we could draw we could have a linear combination of these two vectors to create any other vector that is in the span of these two because these two vectors span the entire subspace, which is this plane. If there was a third vector in the set, something like this, and it's also in this plane or in this subspace, then the span of these three vectors is no different than the span of any two of them because we only need two to describe the plane. And we can have more, assuming that we draw all of these vectors in the plane, we could have like a hundred or we could have infinite vectors basically in this plane and we only need two of them to describe the plane itself. So kind of in general terms, we have n vectors in a basis for a subspace with n dimensions. So a plane is a two-dimensional subspace, and we only need two vectors to describe it. But there are infinite possible basis for any given subspace, right? Because we could pick these two vectors, I could pick these two vectors, I could pick any two possible vectors that are in this plane that are linearly independent, and that gives us infinite possibilities, but always we're only going to have n vectors for our basis of a subspace with n dimensions. Now this kind of brings up the, the next point is we can have basises for an entire vector space like R2 or R3 or Rn. Um, for example, let's just draw an axis here for R2. And if we had any two vectors that were not parallel or basically linearly independent, something like that, then these two vectors would form a basis for all of R2. Let's label that on here as well. Um, and the other thing too is if we can have infinite possible uh, basises for subspaces or vector spaces, sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's beneficial to define something that we call a standard basis, and that's basically if we just have unit vectors that are going in uh, in along the lines of the axes. So if we had a vector that uh, has a length of one pointing in the x direction and we have a vector that has a length of one pointing in the y di direction. Um, well, sometimes well, the, the components would be one, zero, and zero, one of these guys. And uh, if you remember from earlier in the course, we have a name for these guys. This is called i hat and this is called j hat sometimes. Well, these two vectors form a standard basis for R2, whereas any other two vectors that are linearly independent in uh, R2 just form a basis. So sometimes you'll be asked to give the standard basis, and that's just these guys. The same thing applies to R3, where if we have three linearly independent vectors that are all uh, 
the length of one and basically oriented along the axes. We call those the vectors i, j, and k. Convenient names for just one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one. But those would form a standard basis of R3. Um, but there are still an infinite number of linearly independent sets of three vectors that could also be in R3 that would span all of R3 that just aren't these ones which would just be considered like not just a basis, not the standard basis. All right, so now that we've kind of got the, the terminology and the theory out of the way, um, here's a typical question that you might have. It would just be like, find the basis for this set of vectors. And the way that we approach this is first, we wanna figure out if all three vectors are linearly independent, because if all three vectors are, and they have three dimensions, then they're going to span all of R3. But if they are linearly dependent, and that means that they're going to span a subspace, which is either, in this case, would be a plane or a line. And the way that we do that is we set this up as an augmented matrix with the whole right-hand side equal to zero, and we check for linearly independence. And uh, we actually did this exact example, just finding out whether or not these were linearly dependent and finding the dependence equation for them in another video. So I'll just flip over to what we had uh, left over from that. If you guys want to see this video and uh, find the work for it, I'll put a link up to it here in this little bubble thing that pops out. But basically, these are the same vectors 102, 213, and 0, 2, ne 0, negative 2, and 2. And the question in this video was to write the dependence equation for it. So we went through and we solved for this, and we found out that these vectors, in fact, were linearly dependent, and then they had this dependence equation right down here. So I'm going to bring this back over to the other screen. And if you want, what we can do is we can uh, we can divide out the A term here because it's just general and uh, we can bring this negative over to the other side. If you want, just to really clarify that one vector is the combination of the other two or you can rearrange this however you want to show that any two of these vectors can be added in a certain combination to give the third. But really, as long as you find out that they are not linearly independent, that there is a dependence equation, then you'll know that we're not going to need all three of these to describe the basis because they're not spanning all of R3. And so we're only going to need two of these vectors to form the basis of our subspace, which is a plane. So the way that we write that is just that the span of all three vectors, if we called these um, u, v, and w, for example, then the span of u, v, w is equal to the span of any two of these. So a basis for the subspace that's formed by these three vectors is just any two of those. The basis could be u and v, the basis could be u and w, or the basis could be v and w. And the reason that we know that there's two vectors in this subspace, basically meaning that the subspace is a plane rather than a line, because we could have a one-dimensional uh, subspace in R3, which is the vector space of these, is that I can see here with the, the dependence equation that two vectors, some combination, some linear combination of two vectors gives us the third vector. And when we think about that in terms of a plane, that makes total sense because we need two vectors. Let's say we had U like this, and uh, and v like that, then we're going to need some scaled up and scaled down version of them to get w wherever it is as long as it's somewhere in that plane. If it was just a straight line, then we would really only need one scaled up and scaled down version of one of the vectors to get the third, and, and the second vector would be irrelevant to us, and we would have found that out in the dependence equation. So that's basically how we know that they're spanning a plane and not a line, and then that we should be expecting that we have two vectors in the basis and not just one.